Hi. Does God know everything? Well, of course he does, or he wouldn't be God, you might say. But my question really is, does the God of the Bible reveal himself to us, since the Bible is his revelation to us of who he is? Does the God of the Bible know everything? You see, if you want to believe God knows everything, without reference to the Bible, you're free to do that. But that doesn't make you believe the God of the Bible. That makes you believe the God of your own making. Because I believe the Bible shows us that God does not know everything. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that there's a range of things that God shows us in his word he does not know. And so to say he knows everything about the future is false. The Bible does not tell us that. How can we see that? Well, the most classic example I've given in a previous video is 2 Chronicles 32-31. God tests Hezekiah in order to know what's in his heart. That's very explicit. There's other people tested who, for his purpose of knowing, we know this in, uh, with Abraham and, and Isaac. And then, now I know that you fear God. Deuteronomy. At least twice we are shown that. Uh, testing the people of Israel in the wilderness. To know fully who was for him and who wasn't. He searches the hearts for that very purpose. And um, there is a whole number of pointers to God not knowing everything. Indeed, he says something, uh, Samuel says to King Saul, at the point of rebellion, at the point of addressing that rebellion, which had occurred for some time, but was now fully fruit. Samuel says to Saul, God would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Now, however the word of God is true, and that is true, that he would have established his kingdom over Israel forever, or it isn't true. Now, if it's true, because it didn't happen, then it's not true, is it? So that's confusion. And confusion comes from the enemy. You see, I do believe God would have established Saul's kingdom of Israel forever, because it says so. I don't want to add to that. But it tells me about God. He did not foresee Saul's complete and utter rebellion. When you look at Jonathan, you think, wow, he would have made a good king. But from the moment, from the very next verse or second verse after that, I'm not quite sure, very same passage, is the first prophetic mention of David. But God has chosen a man after his own heart. Before that, it's not there. Why? Because God would have established Saul's kingdom over Israel forever. And there's many other pointers. You've got the, di the, the wicked dying before their time. If it, it, either this word of God, the Bible, is true, you know, and I'm not referring to the translation here, I'm referring to uh, the original language, because translation, as I've explained in other videos, are, there's, there are mistakes, especially when this doctrine of has influenced translation. And words have been added and so on. I've mentioned that elsewhere, Romans 8, 28, Romans 11, 22, the eclectos and so on. No, I believe what it says, that there, there is a time for some people. And because of their excessive wickedness, God has to take them home to, to prevent that doing further harm. So there are people 
we're told a number of times who die before their time. Just as we're told that people can live longer because they're honouring their father and mother. It's a promise. Now, it doesn't mean anything. It's not real if there isn't a longer than something. It's not a fixed event. Not in God's mind. Because that's God's mind revealed here in the Word. And I personally would like to believe what the Bible says. Solo Scriptura. I don't wish to add to that. And there are so many pointers. Um, and I've written separately about that. But this, this knowledge of evil is the biggest single one. You see, there was no need for the flood whatsoever if God knew everything. Why? Because it took 17 centuries of man's existence from Adam before the flood. What was the flood for? Well, for a new start, for a new beginning. Why have a new beginning? If you already know that you need different rules in place. Different rules in place involve creation of new mountain ranges, new rivers, the continents split, the limitations upon man, which he then added to after the flood. Further limitations to the growth of wickedness at the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11, by giving languages, so that by the confusion they had to split, preventing the growth of wickedness, so that his purposes for the long term would come to pass, his revelation of himself in his son, the setting up of Israel, the home and the center of civilization at the time, and the center of the known world, straddling three continents as it were, Israel, to communicate about himself because he wants to teach us about himself. But as, as rightness grew through the nations he then permitted the other obstacles to be overcome. Tunnels, bridges, cars, railways, flying, So yeah, Romans 13 is important, you know, the authorities, a whole load of things. But God did not know about wickedness and how it would manifest. He had to learn that. That's my understanding of the Bible. That's how I read it. Which is why Jesus then preached the spirits in prison. Because, you know, people who died in Noah's day, not all of them were wicked. God saved eight souls. So some of them had to go on. Their lives were cut short for God's long-term purpose for all humanity. That's what I believe. That's what is real. There's no purpose for the flood whatsoever if God knew from the beginning how it would all turn out. As far as evil is concerned, no, he didn't appreciate the full extent of wickedness and what it meant. I trust this helps. God is alive and real. Work with him. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. He wants to. He loves you. That's good news.